Hi everyone, my name is Johnny Lederman, as you can see at the top of the screen, and this is my first video on cool physics. Um, this video is called Clap a Whistle. Clap a Whistle. Now, what does that exactly mean? Well, it actually means what it says. You'll be able, by the end of this video, given some um, circumstances, to clap, and the result will be a whistle. Now, imagine that. How can that be? Well, we're going to have to go through the fundamentals of sound a little bit and understand what type of situation could actually create a whistle using a single clap. Well, um, let's start with actually what sound is. So we know that usually we use our ears to hear. So let's pretend we have a little ear over here. We can put that like this. Um, and sound waves, which are often described as um, lines like this, we used to them from the icon. So we have a little icon here, sound icon, which probably looks something like this. Um, you may have it on your computer. So we have little sound waves that leave the microphone and enter our ear, and that's how we usually hear. That's actually how you're hearing me right now. This can be driven by electrical device. It can be dri driven by a wire, which comes through with electri electricity. But often the origin is a microphone where somebody may be talking. So we can understand a little bit of what's happening when a person is creating sound, or when any device is actually creating sound. Well, we know that sound, essentially, is vibration. Vibration of a physical device which vibrates the air, which would mean actually changing the density of the air and letting that change of density spread like waves through the air um, at the speed of sound, which we know is 365 meters per second, which is actually quite fast, but not too fast for human devices like sonic planes to um, penetrate that speed. So we have change of density of the air spreading out through the air and coming to our ear. Well, how do we actually hear sound? Well, let's imagine if we have a single pulse, like a clap, let's say, or an explosion of a bomb. So the change of, of density in the air would look like a delta function, I guess you can call it, which actually just means an increase in the pressure. So if this is the pressure axis, we can describe the pressure this way. And the time may be moving along this way or the space. You can look at it however you like. This will be spreading through the air and we'll hear in, the, in our ear a bang. Well, usually we are used to hearing also sounds which sound a little bit more pleasant than just a bang. And for example, a whistle. So a whistle, which actually has a frequency which you can play on the piano or on any other instrument, um, is got to be something a little bit more pleasant. And that would be um, what we call a sinusoid wave. That's the wave that's coming through the air like this. So it's not actually one bang. It's a certain frequency which is flying through and shaking our ear up and down, up and down, up and down, forward and backwards in our ear's case, and eventually creating a certain tone in our brain. And we can actually recognize and differentiate between high sounds and low sounds. So a high sound would be high frequency, which would look something more like this. We can call this high. I hope I'm still in the screen for this one. And the low sound would be a longer frequency, which is actually something more like this. Um, so you can imagine the lower notes on the piano um, are something like this, and the higher notes on the piano would be, in a way, more like this. Now, the question is, how can we get this pulse to create a whistle, which would be more like that? So let's get to the job. Well, we're going to use something called echoing. Echoing is something that we're all familiar with from different, you know, when you're in the desert, so you can shout at a cliff and hear the echo come back. You can actually clap and the, the clap will come back. So let's see if we can draw that. So if you're standing on a little hill here and there's a cliff across the valley, like, let's put it like this. So you have a cliff. And let's put some grass on the top just so that it looks appealing. And say there's like a lake in the middle. So you have um, something like that. Okay. Now, you are going to be standing at this point on the rock and clapping your hands. Well, you clap your hands. The sound will travel through the air. You can actually, let's draw it as a line. The sound is going to travel with time. 365 meters a second. So we're doing this slowly. It's going to hit the rock. Because of the fabric and texture of the rock, the sound will actually bounce back from several points and will return 
in the direction. You can actually measure the distance of the rock by doing this, and you'll hear the echo. So this is what we call echo. Echo. Now, this echo um, will enable us to create a situation where you will hear a whistle. Well, let's add another phenomenon. Say that you're standing by a cliff, and there's actually, let's go give it a little bit more screen here. So let's say there's an, one cliff which is close to you, and there's another cliff which is just a little bit further along, a little bit further, and let's say a higher rock on the back of this meadow. So you can imagine that. Now you can hear, when you clap your hands, and uh, many of you may have actually experienced this, when you clap your hands, you'll hear an echo from the first cliff, and as a little bit more time goes on, you can imagine you can add the time that it would take the sound to travel from here to here and back, and that delay, time delay, you'll hear another clap, another echo coming back to you from the further cliff. Now, this is interesting. Sometimes you can actually have, if you have a cliff behind you as well, you can hear the clap going forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and you can hear the original clap echoing several times. So I think now we have enough information to figure out how we could create a situation where you would actually hear a whistle. Well, basically, now we know that what we need to do is create a scenario where the echoing sound returning from um, whatever surface is returning the sound um, shall be returned at a, at a frequency that will create a whistling sound. So that's, we can draw the same, the same picture, basically, with um, a man standing on a hill. But we need there to be um, a sound being returned from the other side by a cliff or a surface, which is just, say, this is going to be one surface, and then there'll be another surface further back, and another surface, and another surface, and another surface. Well, you can see that this is starting to look a little bit like steps or something similar, um, but we need there to be a situation where the sound gap, the delay between the wave, which is actually going to be, we'll call this um, delta L, which is the distance, the difference of the length, we know that the sound returning is going to have to travel twice delta L to go forward and backwards. So the sound is going to have to go two times um, delta L, and that's going to have to give us the wavelength that we're looking for. Um, you can imagine that the distance between two pulses, the distance between two um, peaks of the sinusoid wave, that is the actual wavelength that we're looking for. So we're going to call the wavelength lambda, um, traditionally. So um, figuring out this lambda is actually going to be given to us by the famous formula. Well, I actually like looking at it this way. The speed of sound, we can call it speed, the speed of sound will always be equal um, distance over time. So the distance will be the wavelength that we're looking at, and the time will be the time of every um, oscillation of this specific wave. So we can actually write that out as um, the speed of sound equals lambda times the frequency. Um, so we'll have the lambda what we're looking for will be equal to the speed of sound, we can call it S, divided by the frequency, so we can actually add that over here and we'll be able to find out what wavelength we're interested in. But we're going to be talking about a wavelength of um, supposedly between 10 and 15 centimeters. So we're going to have to try and get these clips to appear quite close, which is going to be um, a, difficult, a difficult task to manage. Um, so let's see if we can think creatively of what, what, um, what, what situation we have in our daily lives that could actually replicate this type of um, reflecting of sound. Um, when you think about it, actually, it's not so easy to, to find clips which are going to return the sound effectively in order to get the frequency which we're interested. Well, I'm going to surprise you here, and the phenomena which I found actually gives this effect is what we call concentric circles in the street pavement. Well, if you have um, in your village or in your city some public square or somewhere where people like hanging out, often you'll find that the, the 
flooring in the street is designed in a way which is actually quite pleasing to the eye, um, but it can create very interesting phenomena. So they actually tile the floor with circles of brick um, in a way that there's a little bit, a small gap between every layer. So if we can take this picture of the bricks on the floor and actually flatten it out, um, we can do like a slice, let's say we're going to cut it, um, we'll cut this through um, like this, down this line. So you'll be able to see um, from a side eye view, looking from, um, say, over here, what, what it would look like. So let's have a look. And essentially, you'll find out that you're going to get um, a, mini a miniature picture that looks like this. Where the, flat, the top flat parts are the top of the bricks, and the small gaps is where they place the sand or the cement, whatever it is. Um, there are small gaps between. Now, the distances, not as I drew them, unfortunately, um, are very equal. And because of they go in every direction all the way around, so this, even though it's a very small ledge, um, it is quite effective because of, because the surface area adds up from every direction, same distance. And when you clap in the middle, you're actually going to have a effect of a cliff at a certain distance from you. So this would actually be as if um, there was a cliff at this distance. So we're talking about this circle. So if you add up all the surface area of the circle, you'll find out that it's actually quite an effective um, reaction. So essentially what we've created here is a response and another response at this circle and another and another clip at this point. So um, we can imagine that we may be able to get this whistle sound that we've been trying to create. So let's see what happens. When I clap my hands at this point above the middle circle, so let's say these are my hands, right? This is my baseball cap. So I'm in the middle here um, and you can see I'm clapping. So the sound waves go out in every direction. Let's actually take this off so we can see what's happening. Um, the sound waves are going to be spreading out at the same speed in every direction. So we're going to have circles. If you can imagine the circles spreading out, um, we can actually draw them here. So let's draw it. The circle is going to spread out. The first circle is going to look like this. The second circle is going to look like this. So this is as time goes on. The clap. The clap is spreading out slowly but surely um, and getting closer and closer to the floor. So at some point, we're going to get the front of the clap hitting this first brick and starting to return from here. So this is going to happen at time, say, um, 0.1 seconds. Um, and at a later delay, it's going to be returning from here. And, at a, and, a, and a few seconds later, and a few milliseconds later, it will return from the next concentric circle. And eventually, in the middle, if you can measure, if you could measure exactly what would be going on over here, in time, you would see. Um, let's say this is the air density in time, and this is the time scale. You will find out, um, funnily enough, you're getting a response of deltas that look like this. And that, essentially, as we saw in the first video, is corresponds to a wave which is doing this. which is the desired whistle. So um, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate this working here on the video, but if you actually go outside and try and find out whether you have one of these things in your local village, I very highly recommend trying. And we're actually going to make another video in order to explain why you hear the frequency dropping. The frequency starts very high as it re reflects from the closer pavements. And as it gets further away, um, the, re the reflections return a lower frequency, so you actually find that your frequencies as you move along um, and the time are dropping. So you get a short whistle that starts high, ends low, and you have managed to create from a single clap, from a single pulse of compressed air, what seems to be a whistle. Um, thank you very much for listening. I'm Yoni Lederman and looking forward to see you at my next video.